I went to pay Don Juan another visit. Don Nero was with him. He explained that he liked the northern desert so much that he returned just in time to see me. Both of them laughed as if they knew a secret. I reminded Don Nero that the last time I had been there, his attempts to help me stop the world had been disastrous for me. That was my friendly way of letting him know I was afraid of him. He laughed uncontrollably, shaking his body and kicking his legs like a child. Don Juan avoided looking at me and also laughed. You're not going to try and help me anymore, are you, Don Nero? I asked. My question threw both of them in spasms of laughter. Don Nero rolled on the ground laughing and laid on his stomach and began to swim on the floor. When I saw him do that, I knew I was lost. During my last visit to them, Don Nero had attempted to push me to the brink of stopping the world. His efforts had been so bizarre and direct that Don Juan himself had to tell me to leave. Don Nero's demonstrations of power were so extraordinary and so baffling, they forced me a total reevaluation of myself. The act of swimming on the floor started as he was lying face down. He was laughing so hard that his body shook as in a convulsion. Then he began kicking, and finally the movement of his legs became coordinated. He started sliding on the ground as if he were lying on a board fitted with ball bearings. He changed directions various times and covered the entire area in front of Don Juan's house, maneuvering around me and Don Juan. Don Nero had clowned in front of me before, and every time he had done it, Don Juan had asserted I had been on the brink of seeing. My failure to see was a result of my insistence on trying to explain every one of Dona Nero's actions from a rational point of view. This time I was on guard, and when he began to swim, I didn't attempt to explain or understand the event. I simply watched him. Yet, I couldn't avoid the sensation of being dumbfounded. He was actually sliding on his stomach and chest. My eyes began to cross as I watched him. I felt a surge of apprehension. I was convinced that if I didn't explain what was happening, I would see, and that thought filled me with an extraordinary anxiety. My nervous anticipation was so great that in some way I was back at the same point, locked once more in some rational endeavor. Don Juan must have been watching me. He suddenly tapped me. I automatically turned to face him. When I looked back at Don Nero again, he was on his back and began to kick his legs in the air. I thought for a moment that he was going to start his disturbing clowning again, but he went back right away to his cross-leg position. Don Juan started speaking. There is something you ought to be aware by now. It is called the cubic centimeter of chance. All of us, whether or not we are warriors, have a cubic centimeter of chance that pops out in front of our eyes from time to time. The difference between an average man and a warrior is that the warrior is aware of this. And one of his tasks is to be alert, deliberately waiting, so that when his cubic centimeter pops out, he has the necessary speed, the prowess, to pick it up. Chance, good luck, personal power, or whatever you want to call it, is a peculiar state of affairs. It's like a very small stick that comes out in front of us and invites us to pluck it. Usually we are too busy, or too preoccupied, or just plain too stupid and lazy to realize that's what it is, our centimeter of luck. A warrior, on the other hand, is always alert and tight, and has the spring and the gumption necessary to grab it. 